I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino, creator, writers, and producers of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. We also have Rachel Brosnahan, she is Midge Maisel, Alex Bornstein, Susie Meyerson, and Tony Shalhoub, he is Abe Weissman. Wonderful to have you all here, ringing the bell today to celebrate the final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, I'm very sad, I'm not gonna lie. You yeah. guys are all fabulous, love the show. So Amy, um, I know you were very excited to ring the bell today to celebrate this. Why, why did it make sense for you to be here to kind of kick off the final season, ringing the opening bell? I don't know, <laughs> um, but it's the greatest thing ever. We're doing all these things this week with, um, with the show coming out. And when they said ring the bell, we're like, what? That's amazing. So I, we're a very New York show. Um, New York is a, a character basically in the show. We have been uh, the scourge of New York parking spaces for six years. <laughs> so maybe, uh, I ho hopefully that is why it's appropriate that, oh, yeah. that we are here touching all of your buttons. Okay. Huh? <laughs> now talk to me about the inspiration behind the show. Dan, can you talk to that? Yeah, this was, uh, this came from Amy's mind. Mm -hmm. It was uh, based on her father who was a working stand-up comic named Don Sherman. Uh, a great one. And back in the 50s and 60s, when he and his wife Maven lived in New York before Amy was born, he played the Catskills, he played all the Greenwich Village basket houses, et cetera, et cetera, and a lot of the clubs up and down Manhattan. So I knew him well because he was my father in law. So Amy was always fascinated with his world and that background and just sort of came up with this idea to like turn her six foot two Jewish Bronx born father into the uh, lovely, <laughs> not six foot two, uh, Rachel Brosnan. All her hair. Which yes. is <laughs> and he did not. So, so that was it. It was, it, and it came really naturally when she first mentioned the idea to me, I knew it was like an instant winner because it was just sort of like a world that we both felt we had known um, just through his stories. Um, he was passed by the time she came up with the, with the, with the idea. So this was really an ode to him as well and that whole era. Okay, so Rachel, Midge, we know that, you know, Midge, she followed her dream, you know, she followed her path. Now that was definitely not a path, you know, back in that time that women followed. I mean, women weren't expected to be ambitious. What was it like for you to play that character? That, it, it's felt pretty radical. One of the things that I loved about this character from the very first time I read the script was that Midge isn't one of those women who came out of the womb wanting to change things and break down barriers, but because her entire life fell apart in front of her eyes and her idea of what her dream was evaporated, she had to get creative. She had to find a new way forward and she's born with that kind of grit. And it was pretty inspiring and felt more realistic in some ways and more like some of the women that I know in my own life whose journeys have been vast and non-linear and who are dynamic and bold and interesting. And so it's been pretty incredible to play Midge and watch her grow over five seasons. All right, and Tony, you played her father, Abe Weissman. Um, definitely that was challenging for you, it seems like, hand, you know, handling this daughter who was uh, going against all what you had taught her. <laughs> right, right. Abe, we, uh, when we first find him, is just living a kind of a conventional, stable existence. But because of all of the, the changes that go on in Midge's life and because of her courage and her resourcefulness, he's kind of inspired to make changes in his own existence. and. And by the time the series concludes, he's kind of become a completely different guy. Now, how did this stack up to other roles that you've played? Because you are an amazing <sighs> character throughout, you know, screen and well, film. I mean, you've been on the this, stage. <laughs> this job has been just a, a dream for five, six years now. It's really the, the, the company that I've, I've gotten to, to work with, the, the, the writers, the crew, these maniacs. It's, it's just been... <laughs> It's, it's been a dream come true. Uh, it's a high point, I would say. Who would you say is the craziest person on the stage? Was it Alex? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mention any names, <laughs> no. but uh, no, I would never say anything uh, out loud. Now, Alex, the relationship that Midge and Susie have, you've described it as a womance. Now, it is well, a romance. Tell me what that means. And do you <laughs> have a romance with Rachel right now? Uh -oh. Absolutely. No, Alex <laughs> Here, and Rachel fell in love. Midge and Susie <laughs> fell in love. You know, we're not so different from, you know, a, a trader and a, person, a client with the money. 
<laughs> it's very appropriate that we're here, actually, because um, I we have to know when to sell. We have to know when to buy. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away. You're not gonna, okay. Um, no, but um, but it's true. It's that we, we can't survive without each other. You can make all kinds of plans, but I could book anybody at a certain place. But if it's not Midge, it's not going to do well. She's mm -hmm. she's brilliant. And I'm going to miss Rachel and I'm going to miss Midge. And I'm going to miss these guys. Yes, yes. And this is just, this is depressing. We're never Alex, I'm going to say, it looks like you're getting teary-eyed. So actually, if I can hear from all of you, what, what are you going to miss most about um, the show? The people. The people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. as we've all been saying, we've the been laughs, the people. Yeah. Uh, the constant day after day, week yes. after week yes. of laughter. I feel well, like the free stuff and the snacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the paycheck. Did we mention the paycheck? Being invited so to the, this, I mean, these kind of experiences, that, that is part of it. This has been, it's been like magical. It's yeah. been a, it's been a fairy tale. Once yes. in a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Dan and Amy, finally from you, um, why was now the right time to end the show? I mean, I'm very disappointed. So I, I want to know why. Well, you didn't, you didn't tell us. I, we would have kept it going if we had known we were going to just, you just never reached out. You know, I mean, like, I, you know, the, the trick in our business is sort of trying not to overstay your welcome without cutting a show off in its prime. So it's really, it's really just a guessing game. I know that Amy and I are going to keep coming up with ideas for the show and for these yeah. people, and we're going to have to go. Ah, we can't we can't do anything about it. But you know, <laughs> I, I think it's always a matter of like if if you can leave people wanting a little more, that's the ideal. Definitely, you're leaving a lot of people wanting a little more. So wonderful to have you all here. Thank um, you. Congratulations on an amazing show. I truly enjoyed it, and thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Absolutely. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you for having us. Thanks. thanks.